E-bike battery fires are rare, but they can be devastating. Since publishing my video about the coming legislation on e-bike fire safety, some of my subscribers have proposed ideas about how to reduce the risk of having one of these fires, and I began researching this issue. Let me tell you what I found. Battery casings are tough, but if you drop your battery and the casing is damaged, or if it's swollen, some of the soldering or electronics might have been damaged, so it's safer to get rid of it and to buy a new one. If your battery stops working, you might be tempted to open it to see if you can spot a loose wire or something, but unless you know what you're doing, you're better to leave that to an expert. The most dangerous time for lithium batteries is when they're being charged, so here's a few tips I learned from my followers and my readings. Only use the charger supplied by the manufacturer. Should your charger be defective, get a replacement from the manufacturer of your e-bike. Don't try to fast charge your battery, so don't get a 4 amp charger if a 2 amp charger is the recommended power. Some of my subscribers have recommended that we should keep away from cheap batteries sold on eBay or Alibaba. Another piece of advice I've heard is don't overcharge the battery. It's not clear to me how one can overcharge a battery since the charger automatically shuts off when the charge cycle is complete. I can see that a defective charger might overcharge the battery, but how would you know the battery is overcharged? Most batteries have a BMS, a battery management system. That's an electronic circuit built into the battery that turns it off before it becomes completely discharged while you're riding the bike, and that protects it from being overcharged when you're charging it. However, when you're charging your battery, just in case the charger or the BMS fails to do what they're supposed to do, you might put your charger on a timer for the expected charging time. Alternatively, you could do your battery a lot of good by setting the timer for a shorter charging time. If your battery usually takes 6 hours to reach a full charge, you could choose to stop the charging at the 5 hour mark, which would bring it to about 80 to 90% of its capacity. Lithium batteries love not being quite fully charged, so this will not only reduce the risk of fire, but will also extend the life of the battery and allow you to recharge it more times. I'm told that if you take the habit of partially charging your battery, that you should charge it fully once in a while so it can rebalance its BMS. Keep the battery out of extreme heat at all times, but also when charging. Even if the battery never catches on fire, avoiding extreme heat will prevent shortening its lifetime. Also, it's not good for the battery to charge it when the ambient temperature is below 0 Celsius or 32 Fahrenheit. One piece of advice I've read several times is never leave the battery charging unattended. There's not much you can do if it does catch fire under your nose, but at least you could call the fire department. Now here is a few practical ideas. Why not place your battery in a fireproof container while it's on the charger, like a metal locker, an empty filing cabinet, your barbecue, a wood stove, or your fireplace? Now if you place it in the fireplace or wood stove, remember to open the flue. Another thing to be aware of is that when a lithium battery bursts into flame, it releases a large volume of gases. If you place your battery in a fireproof container, it should be vented to prevent the container from bursting. One e-bike enthusiast has found another way to contain a fire while charging. He modified a metal garbage can for holding his battery with the charger placed on the outside. If you decide to go this route, I would advise you to watch his video linked in the description. What about those fireproof bags that have recently hit the market? 
The idea is that you'd place your battery inside the bag as a precaution. These, apparently, would slow the fire of a lithium battery to allow time for calling the fire department. But before rushing out to buy one, watch the video linked in the description. And what to do if your battery does catch fire? Sometimes, before bursting into flames, the battery might give you a bit of a warning. It might exude a smell or smoke, but if this happens, don't approach the battery. It can burst into fire within seconds, so run away and call the fire department. You could try to put the fire out with the water from a garden hose, but that takes very large volumes of water, and the battery might burst into flames again as soon as you turn off the water. One source tells me that a sure way to put it out is to submerge the battery in a large container filled with water. I don't know what would happen once it's cooled down and taken out of the water. Is there a possibility that it might catch fire again? If this happens, I think it would be safer to call the fire department and have them deal with it. Another argument against dunking the battery is that when pure lithium metal is in contact with water, it catches fire. The oxygen in the H2O feeds the combustion of the metal. Watch the video in the description about the experiment a young fellow carried out. NPL Ventures advises that rather than buying a lithium-ion battery, to switch to a lithium-iron phosphate battery, which are known for their long life and safety profile. You'll learn more about this if you watch his video linked in the description. This would only be possible for do-it-yourselfers, because most store-bought e-bikes can only take one type and size of battery. The best batteries with regards to fire safety are those that are UL certified. For more information about certification, watch my previous video linked at the end of this one. I hope these ideas can be of help. If you have any thoughts you'd like to share or suggestions you'd like to make, please leave a comment. If you like this video, you could help this channel by giving it a thumbs up or leave a comment or share it with your friends. And if you haven't already done so, subscribe. You can help this channel even more by buying a copy of my book, Sailor Without a Boat, How I Sailed on Other People's Yachts and Live to Tell About It. Thank you for watching and remember, never quit cycling.